Well, we have been uh, spending a little bit of time here on the island of Guam, exploring some of the history tied to World War II as it pertains to the, the U.S. invasion to retake this island in late July and early August of 1944. So we've talked about uh, the, the beach landings and the, the failed uh, bonsai charge, which pretty much uh, destroyed uh, Obata's army. And uh, as a matter of fact, as they were pulling back, uh, he lost one of his top generals. So Obata ended up withdrawing his forces to the northern part of the island to try and make a stand there. So the 3rd Marine Division and the 77th Infantry Division started heading the direction that I am now. They divided the island right into lengthwise. Uh, 3rd Marine Division took the left-hand side, uh, 77th took the right-hand side on the east, and they started the push north. All right, well, here's the deal. Uh, the spot that we're going to, I'll go ahead and just tell you, uh, is uh, a location where there are a bunch of tank wrecks from the Battle of Guam. And whenever I looked online, whenever I punched it into Google Maps, there was a road access that would put me within maybe half a mile of, uh, you know, half mile walk of the, the wrecks. Uh, well, turns out that road access is owned by some uh, yuppie resort with uh, security guards who are quite uh, passionate, I guess you could say, about protecting their road access. So now, instead of a half mile walk, I've had to come back here and we got to do a two and a half mile walk in and then two and a half back. But uh, anyway, ho hopefully it'll be worth it. At least it'll uh, allow us to kind of walk in the footsteps of the 77th Infantry Division. I'm not a fan of the heat and humidity here in Guam, but man, this view is something else. Can't even imagine those guys who had to trek through here and clear these valleys out. They were, uh, had to be some kind of tough, I'm sure. All right, I'm gonna continue on back here. Well, here is the reason that we walked our stupid butts back here. Just so that we can see some uh, burned out hulks of tanks. Uh, this one uh, definitely looks to have seen better days. And I, I can't tell if this is battle damage here or if it's just just rust damage. I'm going to guess it's, it's just rust damage. Uh, so I don't know exactly how these uh, different armored vehicles came to to be back here in this spot but uh, yeah there are a few here that uh, we'll take a look at and here also they have a, a little bit more complete Sherman tank uh, so yeah, uh, again, I don't know if these were knocked out here or if this was just like a, a wreckage site where they brought knocked out tanks or tanks that had broken down. This doesn't really look like tank country to me. So I'm guessing that uh, they were tanks that had, had problems for one reason or another and were just brought here. All right, we're gonna start heading back. All right, well, that was pretty cool, I guess. Uh, I don't know if it was 
five mile round trip in the sweltering, humid Guam summer heat kind of cool. But uh, I don't know, it was a, a challenge and, and we did it and now we can check that off of our list. Uh, anyway, now we're gonna hop back in the Jeep. Uh, I think we're gonna go get something to drink because I completely drained my, my uh, water supply. And uh, we're gonna head north to the, uh, the final command post of General Obata. Just got back here towards the uh, last command post. Wasn't quite expecting to run into any wild hogs while I was back here. <laughs> All right, so uh, we just got down here to the area uh, near what is called the Pacific Peace Memorial, the South Pacific Peace Memorial, and. Uh, as I mentioned, the uh, 3rd Marine Division and the 77th Infantry Division, combined American forces, were, were moving their way up to the north with the, the Japanese just basically causing a delaying action. And uh, it finally got to the point where they realized that their uh, resistance efforts were, were futile. And right back here in this cave, General Obata of the 31st Japanese Army was going to put out one final order and then take his own life. So here in this, uh, this bamboo forest, they have some signage here in both Japanese and English. It says at this site, Commander Lieutenant General Hideyoshi Obata of the 31st Division uh, facing overwhelming odds while withstanding American naval bombardment, ordered his troops to mount a final counterattack. Recognizing the inevitable outcome, Commander Obata made a farewell transmission to His Majesty the Emperor and headquarters in Japan, declaring with his last words, I shall be the bulwark of the Pacific Ocean before taking his own life as benefiting an honorable officer. It was daybreak, August 11th, 1944. And that happened right back here in this very cave. And uh, I'd read somewhere that there were a, a number of others that ended up committing suicide along with him. Um, and then the, the cave was sealed off and then one of the regiments of the 77th ended up opening it up. But yep, right here is, is basically where it all ended. And uh, with that, the Battle of Guam was essentially over. There, there were still little pockets of resistance, but uh, the, the battle itself had, had pretty much drawn to a close at that point. I mentioned in one of the first videos that the Japanese started off with 18,500 soldiers here on this island. By the end, 17,500 of them would be dead. The, the 31st Army was completely uh, wiped out. So the second phase of Operation Forager was complete, but there was still one more island before the Americans would completely kick open the gateway to Japan. Mm -hmm. 